as you might have read in the title, this video is about how to shape a small mouse. When I unboxed the OP1, I was shocked how slim it is. And because of past experiences, I didn't expect that I would like this mouse. But I like it. Before we dive deeper into the OP1, let's first talk about these past experiences I mentioned. Especially these three. All of them are quaint mice, which I really like, but for me they share one problem. They get uncomfortable after a few rounds. And after a while I always have pain in my hands. So when I unboxed the OP1 and saw that it was even slimmer, I was like... Oh no God! But I gave it a try and now I'm working on a review where I try to explain why this shape is so f good. So why did my hands hurt? I always thought these three were just too small for me because I have kind of long fingers. But turns out the problem isn't the sides. It's the shape. These three have one thing in common. They get wider towards the front of the mouse. So when I hold the HTS like this, my ring finger is on the same width as my pinky finger. Or sometimes even a bit more outside. Of course this gets uncomfortable after a while. For comparison, on the OP1 my ring finger is a tiny bit more on the inside than the pinky finger. And the curve on the back is perfectly shaped for my pinky finger to rest on. Understanding this also helped me to understand why I like the Lanzo Atlantis Mini. Because the footprint of these mice are somewhat similar. The OP1 doesn't have so steep aggressive sides like the Atlantis, which makes the OP1 much more versatile in my opinion. And as you know, Lamsu took a lot of inspiration from Endgame Gear. So to sum it up, the OP1 is a smaller XM1 with less aggressive sides and a more versatile shape. This is one of the rare mice that comfortably fits my wife's and my hands. I hope other brands learn from Endgame Gear and stop making these hourglass shaped mice. But the world of mouse grip styles is way more complex than just finger and claw and palm. So if you actually prefer the hourglass shape, please let me know why in the comments. This video mainly focused on the shape of the mouse, but of course we also need to talk about the specs and the build quality. The specs are pretty much the same like the XM2WE. Outdated but still good 3370 sensor, Kygo optical switches, which are a solid choice, but maybe a bit too heavy. And like on the XM2WE, the build quality is really solid. The weight comes at 58 grams. But this mouse has another feature the XM2 doesn't have. It can be opened without removing the feet. Endgame Gear even offers some replacement switches, but as far as I understand, you are limited to optical switches. So the big question is, in a world where you can get a good mouse with a 3395 for less than 50 bucks, is the OP1 WE worth 85 euros? My personal opinion is yes, because you can tell that Endgame Gear brings a lot of effort into their engineering. They might get a lot of jokes for the delaying of the XM2W, but for me it proves that they don't release a product until they are 100% convinced by its quality. And this is rare these days. Also, as a wise old man keeps saying, shape is king. But if you're on a budget, there are many awesome mice for less than 50 bucks out there. I'm already working on a video to show you some, so don't forget to subscribe. And if you watched me monotonically reading out my script with my annoying German accent, mad respect to you and thank you for your support. See you in the next one. If you actually prefer the hourglass shape, please tell me why. Ain't nothing but a da -da. They get uncomfortable. Uh, uncomfort. Alter, wie spricht man die Scheiße aus?